Recording in progress. Hello, everybody. Hello, Professor. How are you? Hello, Professor. Hi. Daniel. All right. Good evening. How was your weekend and Halloween? Was it okay? It was okay. At least oh, for wow. me. A lot of fun. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Danny, you will urgent care? Your costume? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ah, very good. Just fun. All right. Um, any question, guys? Are we surgeon? Oh, Daniel surgeon. Are you okay? Daniel. All right. Um, all right, guys. Uh, <clears throat> oh, the kidney stone. I had kidney stone. I I, I broke them by laser about 10 years ago. I, I know it's very hard. All right, not know the uh, doing the surgery, but know when the, it's very painful. All right, and you have a pain from the kidney. All right, um, any question at the beginning, guys, that can I can help you with that. All right, guys, I need your help with your camera on, yeah. The only thing that can help me. All right. Uh, thank you, Edward. All right. Um, thank you, Daniel. All right. Okay, guys. Um, uh, I, I haven't completed you know, the grading yet. So hopefully, uh, uh, I will finish it by Wednesday evening. All right. No. Uh, no problem, Caden. All right, it's okay. All right, but I miss you in your face in class. All right, Caden, uh, and also your your blackboard that you had as your background. I remember that. Now that was nice. All right. Um. Uh, okay, guys. Um, I'm gonna start it in a, a start over actually in the uh, two point nine, which is the basic basis. Um, dimension and then rank. So to define the dimension and then the rank, we need to define the basis for a subspace, all right? So uh, the base, if you have a, a subset H, right, of Rn, uh, especially a subspace F H of Rn, um, a basis, uh, uh, a basis for the H is a set, you know, the B containing you no know, B1, B2, and then BP such that you no know, uh, B is a linear independent Li, and also the H is uh, spanned by the B1, B2, and then BP. Um, actually, to find out if a, um, uh, a set is Li. Do you know how we can find out the set and Li, guys? Just quickly. Oh, I hope nobody is sick, guys. How we can uh, check? if a set is Li. And there is a pivot in every column uh, in which matrix? So matrix consists of the B1, B2, and then Bn, yeah? All right, you're right. Uh, uh, actually, to show that the Li, we put the, you know, the vectors B1 and also the Bp in a matrix, and then we, uh, solve the ax equal to zero. So zero solution. So means that they are Li, right? Non-zero solution, they are Lb, right? 
there is a pivot in every column. Mm, in every column, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, this is the how we can check. Actually, no, the AX equal to zero is, uh, has a zero solution means the same thing that you wrote there. They are equivalent, right? Um, the span, uh, how we can draw that is set span and subspace. So we need to uh, evaluate the AX equals to B, right? Uh, and consider the system of equation AX equals to B. If the AX equals to B is consistent for every B, right? Then we can say that the H is spanned by B1, B2, and then BP, all right. Um, when you have a basis with these, uh, means that a set with these two conditions, Li and also span uh, the, the, the subspace H, uh, the number of the vectors in uh, A is called the dimension of H, right? So again, dimension of H is the number of the vectors in the basis B, all right. I actually gave you an example with the uh, standard vectors in Rn, which is the E1, E2, and then En. Each EI is a vector that now the ith uh, entries is one, and then the other, all, all, uh, all other are zeros, right? And also for, you remember the, uh, for E3, for R3, we have E1, 1, 0, 0, E2 is 0, 1, 0. And uh, uh, the E3 equals zero, zero, 001. They are no I, J, K vector that you had in the in, uh, calculus three or in the 3D space uh, X, Y, Z in the X, Y, Z coordinates. Um, actually the set E1, E2, and then the EN is a standard basis for RN and it, um, it is no, uh, it met no these two conditions because if you consider the AX equal to zero, then the A, uh, the augmented matrix uh, has uh, um, one, zero, zero, and then so on. If you rewrite the equation, then each CI equal to the RLI. We did in the previous, the last session, just uh, I repeat them to you know, turn you on guys to start the rest of this section, all right? Um, and also the other thing, the second uh, condition, the Rn is spanned by this Xn, because if you choose any vector X1, X2, and Xn in Rn, it can be written as the linear combination of uh, the E1, E2, and then En, which means that the Rn is spanned by those vector, and then it is a basis. So in Rn, the dimension of Rn should be Rn. Uh, let us start with a... Uh, 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 very you no know, uh, two dimensional two dimensional vectors, and then set uh, what would be the uh, dimension of the R two, and then how we can find the basis for that. Here is a uh, uh, set consists of the vector. Let me call it the V one, and then V two. Uh, I'm going to show that this is uh, this um, is uh, a basis for R two. So we need to check two things. Number one is um, uh, uh, the vector one, two, and also negative one, three is Li. Is that a true statement? Or if yes, how we can show that this is Li? Any idea for that, guys? There are two ways, no, for two, ve uh, two vectors that sh show that they are Li. One, because we have only two vectors, all right? We can use the fact that if one is non-scalar multiple of the other one, they are Li. Remember that? Yeah? Okay. So, or you can use the, uh, the other one, uh, that Ax equals to zero. Let me uh, try uh, the, the one that is, gives us the, the AX equal to zero. So this is the V1 and then V2. To show that they are Li, we put the C1 V1 plus C2 V2 equal to zero. And then we, we consider the system of equation 
x equal to zero. Eight is consists of the C1 and then C2. Uh, if it is a zero solution, they are LR. So to find, to solve this system, we need to consider the augmented matrix A and zero, which is one, two, negative one, three, and zero, zero. So I'm trying to find the row echelon form of that. I put negative two row one, the operation, elementary row operation two R1, negative two R1 plus row two. So we have one, negative one, and zero. And then we have uh, uh, zero, uh, negative two times two, zero, five, and then zero. So if we write the equation, it means that the C1 minus C2 equal to zero and then it's five, C2 equal to the C2 equal to zero if we plug in by the other equation, C1 equal to zero as well. So we have a zero solution, zero solution. So they are LR. Uh, this is the, it means that the condition number one satisfied. All right. Uh, number two, we need to show that the R, let me write it here. The R2 is span by one, two, and negative one and three. Um, how we can this, we can show this is this, uh, this span R2, this set. All right, um, we show that any vector, any vector from B1 and then B2 is a linear combination, linear combination of, uh, let me write the V1 and then V2. So to show this, we uh, solve the system of equation X equals to B, all right? solve the ax equals to b all right consistency means that uh, uh, it spans inconsistency means that it's not uh, span the whole r2 all right so the ax equals to b you now we need to con construct the augmented matrix which is one two negative one three b1 and then b2 to find the row echelon form of that, I put negative two row one plus row three. So we have one negative one B1, zero, five, minus two B1 plus B3. Uh, do you agree this is consistent um, uh, regardless of what uh, the values of B1 and then B2, I wrote B2. why this system is in, is consistent. Consistent because the last column is not pivot. All right. So it's consistent, we are done, all right? Uh, so X equals to B is consistent. So uh, the R2 is span by V1 and then V2, all right? So condition one, condition two, uh, therefore, Uh, the V1 and then V2 is a basis. Question. All right. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so, um, when we write uh, a um, vector in the linear combination of bases, um, we can have uh, a new definition, and which is the, which is called the coordinate system. Sorry, uh, it's a very small um, uh, concept that we have a definition, right? Uh, coordinate systems. 
um, if B1, 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 B1 B1 is for a substrate H with any vector in question. All right. Any question, guys? I hear something. All right. If you uh, B no is a basis uh, with containing the vector B one, B two, and then B P uh, for a subspace H, the vector uh, any vector in H wait uh, any vector x in H can be written as a linear combination of uh, the elements, uh, the spanning elements, B1, B2, and then BP. But uh, the fact is here that uh, this uh, linear combination is unique. So it means that uh, the, uh, there is only one way to write the linear combination in terms of the B1, B2, and then BP, which means that if the X has two formats, now in terms of the B1 and then BP, right? Uh, two linear combinations, the coefficient must be equal, right? So it's not gonna be difficult to show that this is uh, true. Mm. Just, I'm gonna do it, right? So if you, you set the X, because the X equals to X means that the C1, B1 plus C2, B2, and this is the proof of this one, why the C1 equals to B1. Uh, plus dot 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 plus um, uh, CPBP, right? Should be equal to the other um, uh, format of X, which is D1B1 plus D2B2 plus dot 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 plus DPBP, all right? So if we move everything to the one side, um, this implies that. Uh, the C1 minus D1 times B1, all right? And then factor of each vector, plus uh, C2 minus D2, V2 plus dot, 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 plus CP minus uh, DP, all right? Times BP. DP, all right, so BP, this is equal to zero. But we know that, the basis B, right? The basis B is Li. Means that if we have a linear combination of a set of vectors equal to zero, the coefficient must be zero. I agree with that. So because the B1, B2, and then B3 are B, uh, BP are Li, this implies that the coefficient C1 minus D1 should be C2 minus D2 equals to CP minus DP, all of them must be zero. When all of them is zero means that the C1 equals to D1 and also um, still know the CP equals to DP. So mean that we have only a unique linear combination of a vectors when we have a basis, right? Uh, or let's say uh, the linear combination of a basis um, it's always a unique, right? For a given vector X. All right. Um, the other definition that we have, and we have the X equals to B1. Um, if you are given a vector, um, a basis, no B1, B2, and then BP. B1 and then BP. Uh, since is a basis means that any vector in uh, H and subspace H is a linear combination of these vectors. So uh, this linear combination is uh, given by, you know, the uh, C1, B1 plus C2, B2 plus C3, BP. The coefficients C1, C2, and then CP are called the coordinates of the vector X. So using this, using this notation give, means that uh, the coordinates of X relative you know, to the basis B is C1, C2, and then CP. Basically, let's say there are no the weights of or the coefficient 
in the linear combination. That's why you, you remember when we have, you know, for example, if you have uh, three E1 plus two E3 minus, uh, minus two E2 plus, let's see. Uh, let me write this. For example, if you have three, one, zero, zero, minus four, zero, one, zero, plus, uh, for example, one, zero, zero, one. So in this case, we, if this is an X, so the X with uh, the relative to the uh, standard basis is three, negative four, and one. If we change the basis, now the, instead of the E1, this is the E1, E2, and then E3. If we choose the basis rather than now the uh, standard basis, the coordinates is, should be different. All right. Mm. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead uh, and start the rank of a matrix. But before that, I need to do a little, just remind you uh, about the null space and then call space of a matrix, all right? So let me recall the uh, uh, call space. Uh, column space on the null space. Oops, recall. Uh, the column space is uh, the null space of a matrix the A M times N, right? Do you remember what is the call space? Do you remember that? Anybody remember that? Even one, all <laughs> right. It was in 2.2, uh, all right? But I know you focus, uh, it was 2.8, and you focus on the test, right? You don't, you didn't say that one. But I remind you, no problem. The call space of A is the uh, uh, subspace. Uh, let me write in this form. The subspace uh, span by the column of A. Right. Do you remember how we can find it? Uh, all right. So to find the column space, we need to find the row echelon formula and then find the pivot columns. You remember this part. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, so the column. Uh, yes, okay then. Uh, we reduce it to a row echelon form and then see we see the pivot columns. Then relate the pivot to the original. Very good, yes, all right. So uh, to find the column space of A is uh, uh, the space, the span, is it spanned by the pivot columns, columns in A, all right? So to find it, we need to find the row echelon form of the matrix, all right, and then find the pivot columns, the span of those is a call space. Uh, the other thing that we had is uh, the null space, all right? Uh, the null space of A is, was um, the um, set, of, set of all solutions to the equation AX equal to zero or it is now the all x in Rn such that the ax equal to zero. 
uh, you remember that the uh, uh, to find the non space of A, we need to find uh, we find the uh, parametric solution, right? Parametric solutions, uh, which gives us is obtained by the free variables. You remember that free variables. So it means that the dimension of the null space, all right, uh, the dimension of the null space, the dimension of the null space was uh, in the parametric solution we choose, you know, the uh, um, vectors that are related to the free variables. For example, if you have the R, for example, we have the R times a vector plus you know, the S times another vector, right? So then we can write the null space uh, is spanned by those vectors. So this means that the no dimension of the null space is the number of uh, uh, the free variables. Uh, this is important. Uh, what is the dimension of the call space, guys? Let me write it here. Dimension of the call space of A. You remember that? Or you can say it right because I explained it. So the call space is generated by the pivot columns, all right? So how many vectors in are the pivot columns? Means that this the number of the pivot columns. Let's say the dimension of the call space of A is the number of pivot columns. All right. These two facts are important that we use for the next, for our next concept and also the uh, discussion. All right. Uh, uh, the rank of a matrix, all right. Uh, suppose that we have a matrix uh, A of size M times N, right? Uh, the rank of a matrix A. So if you have given a matrix A of size M times N, all right? So the rank of the matrix is denoted by the rank of A, all right? And it is dimension of the call space of A. So it means that the rank of A, the dimension of the call space of A. Do you remember how we can find the, uh, the dimension of the call space of A? Are you with me, guys? All right. Pivot columns. Yes, Giovanni. All right. Um, oh, do you need the previous page? You're in. Uh, number of the pivot columns, Joseph. Yeah. All right. Uh, Okay, so means that, or we can say the, the rank of A is called the number of uh, pivot columns of A. Um, okay. Uh, another thing is that oh, I, uh, we need to know just as a quick thing in the previous part, right? Um, we know that the A is a linear transformation from Rn to Rm whenever the A is an M times N matrix, all right. Um, can you tell me the call space of A is a subspace of Rm or Rn? Very good, Joseph. It's 
subspace of Rm. What the null space of A is a subspace of Rn. Very good, Eric. Rn, thank you. Um, okay. Um, now let's back you now to the rank, and then I'm going to evaluate the rank of a matrix in example number two. Um, example number two. Uh, determine the rank of the matrix A, which is given, all right. Um, actually, first of all, if you are given as a matrix like that, first of all, you need to find the row echelon form of the matrix to find the number of the pivots, all right. And then you can find the call space of A. So uh, for uh, saving the time, uh, I uh, did know the uh, row echelon form, and then if I found, uh, sorry, the elementary row operation to got the row echelon form of the matrix A. Um, all right, uh, here is the row echelon form of the matrix. Uh, can you tell me the what the rank of uh, what the uh, the rank of A? Rank of A is the dimension of the call space of A, right? And this is, uh, to find the call space of A, we need to find the pivot column. Which columns are pivot, guys? In the row echelon four. We, we have to back you now to the A itself, fine. Uh, column one, two, and four, right? Column one, column one, column two, and then call four are pivots, right? They are pivot column. So um, corresponding to the or to this uh, for the in A, so this, the call space is generated by these vectors, all right? Okay, so now it's easy to find out what would be the rank of A, yeah? So means that uh, the call space of A is spanned by these vectors. All right, uh, two, four, six, zero. The reason I rewrite now the call, uh, call space again to remind you and then have a review from uh, finding a call space of a matrix. Second column, five, negative three. Oh, sorry, five, seven, let me. Seven, nine, negative nine, and also negative four, negative three, two, five. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, uh, I remind you again um, when you write the call space of a matrix, we need to, you have to write the columns in the original matrix, not in the row echelon four. It is important. All right. Okay, so now this means that. Uh, the demand now we are done because the rank of a equals to three, right? The rank of a equals to three, which is the uh, dimension of the call space, right? Okay, so we have to move to the next page, guys. Okay, here is the rank theorem. Rank theorem, or sometimes is called the rank nullity theorem. Okay. Um, for any matrix A of size M times N, all right, so from N, the rank of A plus the dimension of the null space of A is N, where N is the number of columns, right? right. 
this is not very nice and not applicable um, theorem, right? And that relates the uh, null space uh, of a matrix and also the rank and also the uh, call space of a matrix. Um, right. Uh, this is it, you know, you know, the rank A of A plus dimension of the null square equals to N. So uh, let us back you now to the previous example for A, and then we, uh, we are going to verify that uh, this equation is true for this matrix, or, or verify the rank theorem for the matrix A. How we can verify that? We need to find the rank of A, we have to find the null space of A, and then see whether the sum of the, uh, the numbers equals to the number of the columns. Note that, guys, he, the, the matrix A is uh, of size uh, four times one, two, three, four, five, all right? So it means that the M equals to four and N equals to five, right? Okay, uh, first of all, Let's find the rank of A. The rank of A is three, you no, know, by the previous example, right? Previous example. Uh, just remain to find the null space of A. What is the dimension of the null of A? Right. To find the dimension of the dimension of the null of A, I need to find uh, the uh, find the null of A. How we can find the null of A, guys? The, um, the steps to find the null, null space of A. Uh, we solve the system of equation AX equal to zero, I agree? Right. So, and then we need to find the free variables. Very good, Joseph. Uh, we look for free variables and then look for free variables variables um, to find the parametric solution, right? And before starting, you know, before the rank, uh, definition of the rank, do you remember what is the dimension of the null space of A? It was the number of the free variables, agree? Yeah. So uh, the dimension of nodes is gonna be the number of free variable. Do we have free variable or not? So to find the free variable, we need to solve the AX equals to zero and then find the row echelon form of this matrix. Because uh, the row echelon form of this matrix is given, let me find it, let me write it here. Uh, it was, um, what's the row echelon form of this matrix? Uh, plus two, zero, 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 all right. The second row is five, negative three. Uh, zero, zero, then we have negative three, two, uh, zero, zero, um, negative four, five, four, zero, um, eight, negative seven, negative six, and zero. All right, so uh, what are the free variables, guys? Free variables and the basic variables. Basic variables are uh, the pivot position, so which means that the x1, x2, and then x4. Free variables are just x3 uh, and 5, right? So it means that we have two free variables, which means that we don't need to do to find the rest because it's enough to find out the number of the free variables. Unless you are asked to find 
a basis for the null space. In that case, you need to evaluate, you need to write the parametric solutions and then find out those vectors. But when you are going to find, to work with the rank, theorem or the finding the dimension of the null space, you don't need to evaluate it. So, uh, all right, so the dimension of the null of A equals to two, all right. So the rank of three equals to three, the rank of A, and also the dimension of the null space is two. What would be, uh, let's see, this is, uh, the equation works or not, all right. So the rank theorem says that the rank, the rank of A plus the dimension dimension of the null of A equals to N. But we know that the N equals to five. So we have the rank of A is three, dimension of the null space is two, equals to five. So both sides are equal, we are done. Magic. <laughs> yes, Giovanni, all right. Uh, the magic is come from the next exam that I'm gonna do, all right. Uh, So let's do another example using the rank theorem. Uh, actually, if you are given no, a, a, a problem like this on the test, it covers about no three sections, all right? Uh, for because you no, know, in that case you need to find the call space, you need to find the null space, and also find the basis, and then check you know the rank nullity theorem. Right. Um, example, another example. Let me go over to one example here. Uh, Uh, suppose, um, suppose a, a four times seven, four times seven matrix uh, A has three uh, pivot uh, pivot columns. Now part A um, oh, what is the dimension of the null A? Dimension of the null of A. Uh, part B uh, is the call of A uh, equals to R3. Right. Right. Uh, does uh, anybody wants to answer this question? Let me know, send you to a breakout room, guys, for one minute and then discuss. And then after that, uh, I ask a group to. Uh, uh, answer this question, all right? Let's explain how you get this, uh, how you answer these two questions, all right? So let me send you to a breakout room, all right? Uh, so assignment. All right, uh, please don't join to a group.
Recording stopped. Robert, you, have, you should to move to a group. So let me ask. Oh, I was going to take a screenshot of this. All right. Yeah, I was already in the group. There, there was uh, two oh. other people. We just okay. didn't know what the what the problem was. Do you need to be in that group again? Do you need to discuss with that? Oh no, I can't. I can't click on it. All right. Okay. No, thank you. Recording in progress. Professor, you are muted. I don't know if you're trying to talk to us. Oh, I don't know why it's, it's automatically muted when I move on to the, the groups. Right, uh, I'm waiting uh, just about 10 seconds uh, so that all students back to the class from the breakout room, all right. Um, actually, I think, all right, we are done one thing and everybody's here. So I think that Giovanni wants to explain uh, what is the null space of A, right? Ready, Giovanni? Right. Yeah, I can go. Go ahead. Um, since it's a four by seven matrix, that means that the N equals seven. And since it has three pivot columns, the call space of A is three. So that'll make the null space of A four because seven minus three is four. Thank you, Giovanni, right? Anybody else wants to explain the part B? So let me go over to the part A because the A is a four times seven matrix and the M equals to four and then n equals to seven, all right? So, and then the uh, calls, dimension of the call space, uh, 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 dimension of the call space of A is the number of the pivots, right? Pivots means that this is three. And also if you use the rank, uh, rank theorem, means that the rank of A plus the dimension of the null of A equals to seven, right? Because the N equals to seven. Uh, so the rank of A is uh, three plus the dimension on null of A is seven. This implies that the dimension of the null of A is four. Thank you, Giovanni, all right. 
um, anybody else wants to uh, explain the part A, is the call space is R3? Yes or no? Wait. And explain. Right, no valent here, not a problem. I will explain that, right. Um, so part B, um, uh, the call space of A is R3. You remember, that because the A is a four times seven, all right, the A is um, R4. Um, Joseph, you can, you, is that true or false? In that is the call space R3? Yes, is R4, not the all R4, but it's a subset of R, you're right, perfect. Because the A is, uh, can be considered maybe R4 uh, to the R7. So we know that uh, the, uh, sorry, M times N, are we good with that? Oh, I need to change this thing. So from Rm to Rm, from R7 to R4. So the call space of A is a subspace of Rm, but the M equals to four, right? So with the call space of A, a subspace of R3, not R, uh, R4, not R3, right? Uh, oops, so, but means that, uh, no, it's not, all right? Of course, it, we have three pivots, but it does not say that is the call space of A is R3, right? Yeah, the columns have four entries, all right. Uh, okay. All right, so um, let us do another uh, example. Uh, I'm going through to the... Before going through to the example, I'm going to explain more on uh, the basis and also the inverse invertible matrix theorem. Um, uh, another theorem, the theorem number 15 from your textbook, right? Theorem number 15 uh, is called uh, the basis theorem. Uh, the basis theorem says, uh, states here, so they let uh, H uh, uh, H um, uh, be a P dimensional subspace. Um, uh, of Rn, um, any linear independent set of X part A, let me write it here, uh, any uh, Li any Li uh, set of exactly P vectors is automatically um, is automatically a basis. Part B. Uh, the other things. Uh, uh, any set. Any set of uh, P vectors that spans H is automatically a basis. Base. So let me explain it more. For example, Uh, consider 
uh, R2, right? Uh, let now the S is the set for the one and two, and also now negative three and one. Uh, what is the dimension of R2, guys? Dimension of R2 is two, I agree. So how many vectors do we have in S? So uh, I'm going to show that, uh, let me, okay, let me more, more write the questions, all right. So this one um, is, is one of the, is S a basis based on now this theorem uh, dimension of R2 equals to two I agree and also we actually we need to check you know, we need to check two conditions. Number one, S is Li, right? Number two, uh, uh, S spans R2. Actually, you don't need to check both of them based on this theorem. Uh, because there are two vectors in S, and also dimension of R2 is two, and also the S has two vectors. Just we find, we find that they are Li. If uh, S is Li, then S is uh, a basis. No need to check. Let me write as automatically a basis. Then S is automatically basis. A basis. This is, uh, you know, uh, there is a, uh, uh, the result of this uh, theorem. Uh, the other things also you can check the condition number two, and then because we from we know that the what is the dimension of the R two, you don't need to check the other one. Uh, what, uh, checking one of them is enough. All right. Okay. Um, Question, any question? All right, so the last theorem that we have in this uh, section is, is uh, the rank and then invertible matrix theorem. Rank. So in the, the section that we evaluated uh, to, uh, we talked about the invertible matrices. So the question was how we can find out um, the inverse of matrix exists, all right. Um, one way is to find the row in the form of the augmented matrix A and then I, by elementary algorithm is too long things to do, but I'm not going to give you a new method to find out how we can check it. But in this theorem, we can say that uh, what uh, uh, what statements are equivalent to invertibility of a matrix. Um, in this uh, this theorem says that let um, A be an M times N matrix. Uh, then uh, the following statement are equivalent. Right. 
so set A. The matrix, uh, sorry, one thing that I uh, did a mistake here, the, for invertibility, A must be a square matrix, and not M times N, it is N times N. N times N matrix. So the matrix A is invertible, means that the A inverse exists. All right, so equivalent to say that um, the columns of A form a basis of Rn. The columns of A uh, form a basis for Rn. Um, C. Uh, when the calls, uh, when the co call space and columns of A form a basis for Rn, this means that the call space of A should be the whole Rn. All right. Whenever I know the call space of A, the whole Rn, the party, what is now the dimension of uh, the call space of A, guys? When the call is whole Rn. And very good, right? Uh, because the call space, the call space of A is Rm in the whole, the, and we know that the dimension of Rn is n. All right. So part E, when the dimension of the call space of A is uh, Rn, what is the rank of A? What's the rank of A? It's straightforward. It's going to be the n again, all right? Uh, because the rank by definition. Uh, but e, let me write the f. What is the dimension of uh, the null of A, the null space of A? <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Kagan. Um, dimension of the null. It, this is m times n. Very good, it's zero, right? It is zero because the rank of A plus the dimension of the null of A equals to N. When the rank of A is N, right? This should be zero, I agree. So, and F, G, when the null space of, um, the dimension of the null space of A is zero means that the null space of A itself is a single vector zero. So all of these things are equivalent, right? So to prove them, we need to you know, we can uh, conclude the C from B, B from A, C from B, D from C, D from A, and we can know, uh, uh, get, part A from G, it's not gonna be difficult things, right? Um, actually this, um, you may have some uh, problems regarding the true false question on your homework problems using a more invertible matrix theorem, right? Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and then start the next section, all right. Uh, which is the next chapter actually, the determinant, all right. Mm. Let me see if I have uh, the notes, otherwise I need to write by hand I, in my device. All right.
hold on a second guys I'll be back soon So I'm going to go ahead and start the next uh, chapter, actually chapter three. Chapter three. Uh, chapter three, it talks about the determinant. Uh, let's see what the determinant is, all right. Um, uh, we assume that, right? A uh, M is a square matrix. Means that a square a matrix of size n times n. All right. Um, actually, uh, Uh, the idea idea is uh, associate associate uh, with uh, a n times n a number a number uh, denoted by uh, determinant of A, or we use this notation for that, you know, A with the absolute sign around it. Okay, why determinant is important? Before going to evaluate the determinant of a matrix, there is a very powerful thing that shows when a matrix is invertible, right? And that is that whenever the determinant is non-zero. Let me write the uh, theorem here. Uh, a theorem. Actually, is instead of writing, you know, the row echelon form and then find find out whether the uh, a is invertible and then find the inverse, we can easily by evaluating the determinant show that the uh, matrix is invertible or not. So the a n times n matrix matrix is invertible. If and only if uh, if and only if determinant of a is non-zero, right? This is um, the most important things that we have from the determinant, all right? Uh, I, I'm not going to prove it, but it's a fact, right? Um, let's see. Uh, what is the determinant of A, right? What is uh, the determinant of A? In general, um, we are going to discuss knowing any, you know, uh, uh, size uh, of a matrix, all right? Um, let us start with very simple one, right? Uh, number one, Number one, um, if you know the matrix A is a one times one matrix, that we have A one times one matrix. So uh, in that case, we have only one number. So the, the determinant of A is itself. It's going to be the A itself. For example, determinant of uh, the matrix, uh, determinant of the matrix. Uh, negative five equals to negative five itself. Uh, number two, uh, if A is a two by two matrix, you know this, the other simplest uh, square matrix. 
it's going to be the A, B, C, and then D. Do you remember what is the determinant of A? Uh, AD minus BC, very good. So the AD minus BC, number three. If A is uh, three by three matrix, for example, A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, let me write in this form. No. You write, for example, A11, A12. A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, and A33. How you evaluate the determinant of this matrix? Anybody remember or know how we can find that? Determinant of a three by three matrix. Determinant of A is defined based on all the two by two matrices by removing the row and then columns from the A. So this means the determinant of the uh, to write uh, the determinant of A. So I remove the first row, all right, the first row, and then first column. And then uh, on the corner, we have A11. So the determinant is going to be the A11 times the determinant of, yes, you're right, Tim. Uh, that means that we have A11 times the A22, A23, all right. So A32. A33, three, three, uh, so the determinant of that matrix, uh, minus A12 times, again, we need to remove the first row and then second column, right? We have first row and then second column. The remaining matrix is A21, A23, um, A31, A33. And then the last one is A13 times the determinant of the remaining matrix is A21, A22, A31, and then A32. And then you evaluate that. So uh, I'm not going to expand more this one, but it's not going to be difficult to find the determinant of a matrix. Oh, I put an example for the next session, guys. I'm gonna stop for now, guys. Uh, all right, and then we continue on Wednesday. Uh, any last minute question? Yeah, I have one question. So, when do you know like to switch the signs? Because you have the A11 minus A12, and then you did plus A13. All right. Uh, let's answer. You know uh, the uh, the next session because. In that, so far, just I wrote, no, the determinant based on your knowledge. Um, I understand your questions, and this is a question for anybody, right? You have seen before in other no courses or in physics or in the calculus three, and you, know, you don't know which one is negative and which one is positive, right? So when we talk about the in general in N, all right, to evaluate the determinant in general for N, I will let you know why we put a negative for that. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome, Giovanni. Right. Any other question? All right, guys. Have a good evening. See you Wednesday. Bye, everybody.